Hi, welcome to Sunday Afternoon Live on Facebook. We are here at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey. And I thought that this week what I would do is take a little look at prepping your model before you paint. Now this isn't going to be a, a long drawn out demonstration. It's going to be basically some hints and tips for things that I do before I paint a model. And as you can see back here, I have a model that I've been working on for a couple weeks now, sporadically on and off, which is HK's new B17F that's coming out. I'll pull this off the wall here. This is a big model. It's a really nice big model. And as you can see, I've got it almost all assembled here. And you say to yourself, well, how's he going to paint it then? Well, that's kind of what I wanted to discuss here today, is when folks come into the store, Usually what they do is they ask for all the stuff I need to build my model. And we're happy to oblige. You know, we'll give you the paints and we'll give you the glue. And we'll give you the nippers and things like that. But I think that the, the second most frequent question is how do you, how do you paint the model? How do, you, how do you do it? And they're pointing at me saying when you paint something like in the case, how do you do it? And I think that something that escapes a lot of people is thinking the project through. In other words, I'm going to grab the instruction sheet right here. And this is this is the instructions for a second B17, a bigger one, 132 scale. As you can see, you know, your instruction sheets show you how to build this thing or they show you all the assembly steps. But what they don't do is is they don't explain to you what sequence to do things in. Yeah, they'll show you, you know, put these, these, these together, and in the end you have this. But the way you paint your model and the way you finish it kind of determines the steps you take in between to get to that point. And when I say that, what I'm talking about is, let me grab a piece of this guy here. This is the other B-17. You can see this thing's huge. It's a 132 scale B-17. And you can see on the bench here, the size difference. It's massive. Um, but I grabbed this piece to show you guys something, and that is when you build an airplane model, <clears throat> this goes for just about anything, cars, tanks, airplanes, you need to paint the interior and everything first. And let me, let me step back a hair. When I first started building models when I was a kid, I would take the screw out of the part, screw it out of the box, this is how I did it when I was eight, nine years old. I'd pull this part sprue out, and I would look up all the different colors. I'd say, okay, the propellers are black, and I'd paint them black on the sprue. I'd paint the tires black. I'd paint everything on here, then snip them all out and put them together. And you might say, well, that's a good way to do it. For a young youngster that's doing it and knows no better, it was fine. You know, I put it together. But I learned later that when you build a model, you have to think about what it's like in the real world. In other words, when I put this B-17 together, when I put these two fuselage halves together, right, I'm just going to get them lined up here. And as I said, we're at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey. If you guys have questions, please post them. I'll be happy to answer your questions. So it's kind of tough without the interior in it to line this up. But my point is, if you look at this, there's always going to be a seam line where the parts meet. And guess what? On a real airplane, there is no giant seam line that runs down the center of the fuselage or on the wings or anything. So for a model builder that wants to take his models to the next level and wants them to be more realistic and look better, you have to think about what do I put together so that I can putty the seams and sand them down and get it all prepped and ready to prime and put paint on? And the B-17 here is a, a good example of that. You can't really see it because I've got it all sealed up, obviously. But if you look in the Bombay, you can see color. You can see the green, the interior green on that. The interior of the aircraft is also painted. What I did was I looked up on the instructions, all the sub-assemblies for the aircraft I built, and this is for the bigger one. I built the cockpit first, 
Hope you can see that. That's a B-17 cockpit. It's very cool, too. Um, I put together the bomb bay. This is the hanger that the bombs hang on. And what I did was I assemble as much as I can first, interior-wise. Obviously, I'm not going to put the sidewalls on it because I want to paint those separately. But this is where you have to think about it. You have to think about what can I get away with painting first and then sealing this airplane up. Because when I paint this airplane, I want the exterior to be perfect. I don't want there to be any seam lines. I don't want there to be any you know bad spots or anything like that. So test fitting and assembly is important. But you got to paint everything inside first and then put the fuselage together. And when I look at this airplane, it was a lot of work to paint the interior. I mean, I painted everything inside of this sealed it up and now you see very little of it you can see inside the pilot's windows and in the radio compartment and stuff but overall don't see much but i paint everything i have to first then i put it together so when you look at this b17 i'm gonna have to do a lot of work to get it prepped in other words i've already assembled it but what i gotta do now is i gotta go back and take off all the separate parts like the propellers. I'll take off the machine guns. I'll take off all the clear parts. And some people will leave these clear parts on so they can mask them and then spray it with primer. I usually take them off and mask with tape and then go back. But we're jumping ahead a little bit. So that's the first thing I think that everybody needs to think about is what do I have to do first to get ready to paint? And first thing on this one was to paint the interior and put it together. Now, once everything's assembled, now what my goal will be, <laughs> this, thing's ha this thing's like really big. Um, my goal will be to mask off any of the clear parts. Um, if I paint my engines first, which I probably will, then I'll take some tissue and stuff it inside the cowling so that when I spray the primer or paint, it won't hit anything that's painted. So the idea here is, be able to mask off or you know close off any of the areas you don't want primer to get on. So the reason the reason I do this, the reason I put the whole thing together first is so that I can go back and check for seam lines. You know where the two pieces go together. And this one's nice because the top piece is a solid piece. But I know that if you look at the bottom here, let's see if I can get the angle on this so you can see it. There is a seam line running right along here. You can kind of see it down here a lot. So what I got to do now is I'm going to tape this all off and I'm going to shoot it with some primer. And the primer acts, does two things. And I'll show you the primers I use. There's a whole bunch of different primers out there in the store. The one that I recommend and I use 99.9% .9 of the time is Tamiya primer. It comes in gray, comes in white, comes in a cream color, comes in German undercoat red for armor. Um, the Tamiya primer, I think, is the best primer out there. And like I say, the reason you're going to shoot primer is so that after you shoot it, you will see the seam lines. They jump out. Once you put some primer on this thing, I'm going to see the little gaps in the seam lines that I'm going to have to go and putty and then sand down a little bit. Okay? So, I've got Tamiya primer. I've got Tamiya in a bottle so you can hand brush it on if you need to. I've got Gunzi Mr. Surfacer primers, and they have different grits, like 1,000, 15,000, you know, different, different. I guess it's heaviness of the, the primer itself. But I've got Gunzi primer, and that comes in different colors. Gunzi makes a metal primer. If you're working on metal cars and things, you can get some Gunzi metal primer. So primer's really important. It shows you where your flaws are that you'll have to clean up and sand. But it also gives you a nice surface for your paint to adhere to. If any of you have tried to paint acrylics or other types of paint on straight plastic, you know that it can be frustrating. Um, the paint really needs a surface with a little bit of a tooth to it. And flat paint has a tooth. That's why it's flat. Um, gloss colors are smooth. They reflect light. That's why they look shiny. Flat colors are kind of a grainy, it's, it's microscopic, but it's a rough surface that makes it flat, it appears flat, it doesn't reflect light, but it also gives you a surface that paint will bite onto and, and give you a nice solid surface to work on. So anything I build, anything, figures, ships, cars, armor, prime everything. 
and some things you can prime ahead. You can start building, and I started putting together, like I say, the subsections of this bigger B-17, the cockpit, and so forth, and I just grabbed some of the smaller parts, and I'll show you a little trick that I do. These are the bombs that go in the bomb bay, and I don't know if you can tell in the video the difference in the color. These are primed. This isn't primed. So after I prime these things, I can go back, and I actually see a couple little flaws on here. I go back, and I look at the parts, and as you can see, like on this part right here, there's a little, little nib or a little hole, and there's one down here. So I can go back and fill those with a little bit of putty and then sand them. That's what primer does. It helps you see any flaws. So I'll put this down. Um, I also have these guys here. These are the oxygen tanks that are in the aircraft. And I primed the bombs gray. I primed the oxygen tanks white. Any guesses why? It's the color of the paint that's going on. The bombs are going to be painted like an OD green, so a gray primer is great. These are yellow. The oxygen containers inside the aircraft are yellow, so I prime with white to give it a really good light base underneath so the yellow you know, you won't use as many coats of the yellow, but it'll look much better. So always keep that in mind when you're painting or priming something. Look at the color of the actual piece when it's done. If it's like an OD green, like a B-17, gray's fine. Yeah. If you're painting cars, especially cars, and they're light colors, yellows, reds, and so forth, bright colors, always prime with white. Very important. And the trick I was going to show you is... This is cool. When I paint small parts... I mount them on something. You can see these are mounted to a popsicle stick or a craft stick. It's these guys here. These are basic craft sticks that we sell in the store. Here we sell bags of them, we sell boxes. I use these for everything. I use them to mix glue, mix paint, and so forth. Get yourself some craft sticks. And the thing that I use with the craft sticks to mount the parts is this double sided crepe tape. This is like masking tape, but it's double sided, it's sticky on both sides. And people use this, I believe, for golf club wraps, things like that. But it's double-sided crepe tape. Very good stuff. So the nice thing about this is I can put it onto my popsicle stick. All right. And the next part I prime. Let's say I'm going to prime this sidewall of the Bombay. I look for the area that's not going to show. And I put my little stick on it. Bang. Now you've got something to hold white spray paint. Put a glove on. You can spray your parts. And then when you're done spraying them, bring this over. I always keep foam at hand near the spray booth. As you can see, once you spray these, you can pop them right into the foam and it'll hold it for you. So foam, craft sticks, primer, and you're moving along. So I talked a little bit about putty and putty's a, a tricky one. Everybody kind of has their own favorites. And I have found that, I'm going to move the B-17 again, put them up here. I found that there's basically two types of putty out there. There's lacquer or acetone based putties, which thin down or clean up with acetone or lacquer thinner. And then there's acrylic putties that are, are just starting to come along. Acrylic putties are really nice, like this Vallejo putty so, right here. They're really nice, but you, you can't use it for heavy applications. In other words, it's really good for fine scratches and maybe some seam line work. And what's nice about it is it smooths with water. If I put some of this acrylic putty on, I can just take my finger and wet it and just smooth it down. Um, you don't want to do that with an acetone-based putty like the Tamiya here. So that's the Tamiya putty. The nice thing about the lacquer-based putties are they kind of attack the plastic. You put it on and it almost kind of welds itself to the plastic because it's a chemical bond. And that way you don't have to worry too much about shrinkage or the putty coming out of the seam line. With the acrylics, you have to be really careful because they kind of, they go in there, but they don't attach like the lacquer bases do. I like this. I like the plastic putty for really, really fine seam line work figures, you know, where the arm joints are, things like that. And then when I get into heavier things, I like to use the lacquer-based putties. And I found a tool 
that I want to show you that we have in the store here. And I think we're a little low on stock on these right now, but I'm going to show you anyway because I think it's one of the greatest tools going. When you put putty on, and I'll give you a demo here. I always use... I always use either a sheet of styrene or I have disposable palettes at home for painting. Always put your putty on something else, you know, and be careful with it. Always, you know, wear an apron, make sure, you know, keep things clean because putty can get messy real fast. So this is the Tamiya putty. And the Tamiya putty comes in two different colors. It comes in gray and white, um, pretty much for the same reasons that I showed you with the primer. If you're painting bright colors, use the white primer or the white putty. If you're using a painting OD or military, use the gray primer or the gray putty. So I put a little bit of the putty here on this this guy. And what a lot of people use, I'll grab one out of here. Yeah. What a lot of people use to put their putty on. Is basically an exacto knife blade you know just a little exacto blade and they just take a little bit of the putty and then put it on a seam line you know we'll grab a bomb here just for an example and they would just put a little bit of the putty on with their knife I don't do that I found something that works a lot better and it doesn't stick like when you use a knife blade for putty it sticks to the knife and it gets messy real fast these AK silicone brushes. When we first got these brushes in, I kind of looked at them and said, well, what are they for? And then I figured, okay, you could use them for sculpting. Like if you're using A and B putty, you could wet these rubber brushes and go in and, you know, put seams or folds in, you know, clothing, things like that. And then I started thinking about putty. When I use my putty at home, I always use a piece of silicone rubber from a rubber from a, a mold like I make a silicone mold and I'll take some of the rubber that's left over and use it to put putty on so I'll grab one of these and they're just regular blue silicone rubber you could use an eraser almost but what's really great about these little brushes they come in all different sizes and shapes I mean there's you know elliptical ones there's round ones pointy ones I like this flat on both sides and what you can do with these is like I say putty doesn't stick to silicone so you can take a little bit of putty on your knife here or yeah, knife on your silicone rubber then I can just go in and find those little boogers right there I can just go in with this guy and just Put it on with that. These things work really, really great. The silicone rubber brushes. So that's highly recommended for putting your putty on. Silicone rubber, extra rubber from a mold, or get yourself a couple sets of these AK silicone brushes. They come in different sizes, different shapes. Really, really good stuff. Okay, that's highly recommended. Okay, I wipe this off. And that's the nice thing. The putty just comes right off the, the rubber, just pops right off, which is really cool. All right, so we've gone over some putty. We've gone over putting the putty on. Sandpaper. What kind of sandpaper do I use? I brought out some different grits of sandpaper and some different types of sandpaper to show you. And... We have in AK dry sandpaper and wet sandpaper, and the difference being, obviously, you're going to dry sand with this. And the wet sandpaper is more like when you're doing clear, or you're polishing, or you do a car and you put a clear coat on, and you can wet sand that, and then buff it out and put wax on it. So my favorite sandpaper is Tamiya, and Tamiya makes the best out there. And they make it in different grits. And the grits that I recommend for model building would be 400 I start usually around 320 and that's for heavy sanding and I have some of it over here you know I'm jumping ahead of myself with this you can buy packs of Tamiya sandpaper with the different grits in them and one of the sets I believe has like 240 320 400 
that's where you want to be in that range between 200 and 600. And you start with around a 320 to do heavy sanding, you know, where you're knocking the putty down. <clears throat> and then you progress to um, finer grits until you're finished. And then shoot primer on it again and see how it looks. The other kind of sandpaper that's really great. And when you buy this sandpaper and you get it home, you're going to take it out of the package. Let me see if I can get this out of here. You're going to take it out of the package and it's going to be a big long sheet. So get yourself a pair of scissors. That's how I do it. And I just basically cut my sandpaper up into small strips. And you can make them even smaller if you like. And that's pretty obvious, but that's something you want to do. Plus, these are foam-backed sandpapers from Tamiya. We have it from other manufacturers too, but they're called sponge sheets. And this is a 400 grit. And basically, I would do the same thing. I would cut this off. And what's nice about the sponge sheets is the sponge sheets will conform. In other words, if I'm sanding a really weird shape or a wing, like the, the leading edge on a wing, and I have to curve it a little bit, this stuff works great. I love the spo this sponge-backed sandpaper. This comes in handy for all kinds of purposes and uses, especially when you're trying to get in there and sand in areas that are hard to get to. You can just get this in there, and it's foam, so it kind of conforms to the shape you're trying to sand. So... Regular sandpaper, wet, dry sandpaper, wet sandpaper, and the foam-backed sandpaper. This is really good stuff. You want to invest in a little bit of that. Um, let's see. I showed you guys the different types of putty, and I'm going to just go over those one time real quick. I've got Tamiya putty. And Tamiya putty comes in gray and white, so depending on the color you're doing, that way. I have Tester's Contour Putty, which is... A, I think you can thin this down with liquid cement, but this is another type of um, acetone, I guess, based putty. I've got the Vallejo plastic putty, really good stuff. And last but not least, this one's very popular. This is called Perfect Plastic Putty. We sell this to a lot of the hardcore airplane builders, and like I say, it's another plastic putty, so you have to be careful. You, you know, you have to watch your shrinkage and make sure that it's in there good. But really good sand. That's really good stuff too. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to talk about was after I get my model prepped, in other words, after I take all the extra parts off of it and I mask off the windows and things, well, I jumped ahead. I want to show you masking windows and things. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you the material I use. Let me just get straightened out here a little bit. And in regard to sandpapers, you can also get sanding sticks, like these guys here. We sell them. There's Flexifile has them. They come in packs like this. So you can use these as well to go around curved surfaces and whatnot. So sanding sticks come in handy. Don't forget about them. Plus files. These needle files come in really handy. These are Tamiya needle files, and they have different shapes. So you can use these. When you're cleaning up and you got a part that you have a seam line on, you can just take your file and go over the edge. Files come in handy for figure work when you're cleaning seam lines and things off figures, but they also come in handy for aircraft and other models. Um, so we've gone over primer, putties, and I was just going to show you masking. This is this is probably the, the trickiest part of prepping a model is masking and deciding how to mask it. Um, Edward Models makes what are called masks. And what they are is they're pre-cut flexible masks for specific aircraft. This one's for a B-17. So I can go in and peel each piece off. I'm going to open this sheet to kind of give you an idea. They show you on the instructions where each piece or each piece of the mask goes. Like this up here, this is the canopy glass and you can see the blue areas are the pieces of mask. So I just peel those off that sheet that comes with this and place them on the clear part. And when I spray it, I just peel them off and bang, your windows are all masked. That makes it a lot easier than it used to be. You used to have to use regular masking tape um, or Tamiya tape, like the stuff here. And, and I use this a lot. I still use this a lot. 
when you're going into really weird areas or you're masking off panel lines or anything else. But to me, a tape is really great stuff. And what I do is I take some of this tape, all right, and I take a piece off. I always keep a piece of styrene around. I got a lot of styrene on my bench. And what I do is I take the tape and I lay it down on the styrene. Then I can take a knife and a blade and just cut pieces of the tape off. You know, in other words, let's go here. I can just take my edge and make these pieces whatever size I want. Cut them off with the X-Acto knife and then peel them and put them on the airplane. So, got yeah, Edward Mass, Tamaya Masking Tape. And I think that's about all I have for today. Um, I'd like to recommend that if you're not sure, like I say, we're here at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey on Route 30. And I'm trying to impart to you guys just, just the logic of the process that you want to go through to paint an airplane or to prep it, which means look at the kit first, determine what parts have to be built and painted first to be closed inside, and then put it all together, pick your putty, put a little primer on it. You can mask off everything, prime it. Look at where the bad spots are, you know, where seam lines are and stuff. Use a little bit of the primer. Like I say, use those um, rubber, the silicone rubber brushes. Those are great to put the putty on. Let it dry, sand it. And when you sand it, you've got um, sandpaper between 240 and 600 grit where you want to be. Get some of the sponge type sandpaper for doing curves and things. And I highly recommend coming on down to the store and picking up some information. In other words, I learned what I learned by reading books and watching other modelers. And the best way you can do it is to get some information. This is a really great beginner's book from AK Interactive. And it basically takes you from the beginning through puttying and decals and basic building and so forth. So this would be a really good investment to make if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the process of model making. So. I'm going to leave it at that. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, please leave me comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And until next week, keep modeling, and I'll see you for Facebook Live next Sunday.